السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ladies and gentlemen let's continue our computational fluid dynamics CFD tutorials in this video we're gonna talk about a very interesting and important application the fuel cell especially the proton exchange membrane PEM and uh, the, single, the single cell and the stack and how to cool both because it's very important to uh, learn how to model the cooling okay because it is uh, very effective to uh, cool the fuel cell depending on the uh, power output okay so uh, let's get started we have here ANSYS fluent advanced uh, our add-on add-on modules uh, one of my previous videos we talked about the uh, battery module uh, the lithium ion and you can find its video on uh, my playlist or my channel so today we're gonna talk about ANSYS Fluent Fuel Cell Modules actually there is a video uh, from uh, or uploaded by ANSYS uh, itself uh, about the PEM This so this is fluent actually PEM as you can see. You can find it on YouTube. Uh, so now uh, we're gonna talk about how to model it from scratch the geometry because the video actually focused on the fluent setup and that's it. So today we're gonna learn how to model it from scratch. Uh, so we have here fuel cell and electrolysis model theory. So we have here fuel cell, the fuel cell and the electrolysis module, sometimes referred to as the resolved electrolyte module, is provided as an add-on module with standard and fluent licensed software. A special license is required to use this module. A fuel cell is an energy conversion device that converts the chemical energy of fuel into electrical energy. With the fuel cell and electrolysis model, both the triple phase boundary TB, TPB, also known as the catalyst layer, and the ionic conducting electrolyte, also known as the membrane in PEMFC terminology, are included in the computational domain. So the fuel cell and electrolysis module allows you to model PEM, FC, SO, FC, and high temperature electrolysis. To determine the physical domains that are included in the fuel cell and electrolysis module, a schematic polymer electrolyte membrane fuel cell is shown. So we have here it's a really important thing. We have here the anode collector, which is, will be solid. And uh, we have here the cooling channels, we're gonna talk about them later. We have then uh, the anode gas, gas diffusion layer, this is the electrode, and anode uh, catalyst layer, this, and then here the membrane, and here the cathode catalyst layer, and cathode gas diffusion layer, and cathode collector, and here are the cooling channels. Okay. We have here this, uh, this is the uh, tab, and here we have here the gas channel H2, it's fluid, and here is the gas channel air. So the air enters from here, and the gas channel or the hydrogen enters from here. We have here this is the uh, top uh, wall, which is the tab uh, anode, and we have here the tab cathode and the electric current flows. As you can see from here to here. So energy flows into the fuel cell on the anode side, it diffuses through the porous gas diffusion layer. This okay, and comes in contact with the catalyst layer. Okay, here it forms hydrogen ions and electrons. The hydrogen ions diffuse through the polymer electrolyte, as you can see, and uh, forms hydrogen ions and electrons the hydrogen ions diffuse through the polymer electrolyte membrane at the center the electrons flow through the gas diffusion layer to the current collectors into the electric load 
as you can see uh, electrons enter the cathode side uh, through the current collector to the gas diffusion layer and so on the catalyst layer on the cathode side the electrons and hydrogen ions and oxygen combine from form water so it comes from here and then continue here O2 plus 4H positive plus 4 electrons gives you uh, water okay in the fuel cell and electrons is small and as flow into electric potential fields are solved to one potential solving in the electrolyte and the TPB catalyst layer the other is solved in the TPB catalyst layer the porous electrode and the current collectors the rate of electrochemical reactions are computed in the TPB layers at both the anode and the cathode based on the cell voltage that you prescribe the current density value is computed okay alternatively a cell voltage can be computed based on a prescribed average current density so we have here the PEMFC over less decade and so on and you will have the uh, development of this amazing uh, invention it is used uh, it's, uh, it will replace actually the uh, comp internal combustion engine for the electric cars and also uh, we have lots of applications uh, that uh, depend on the electricity we can use the uh, proton exchange membrane fuel cell and we have here the uh, the equations and you know the electric cars can run uh, using batteries which I talked about in one of my previous videos and the electric cars also can use the fuel cells but uh, we need the hydrogen gas okay so we have to uh, get that fuel so uh, as you can see we have here it's OFC and I'm gonna let you continue these things uh, by yourself to save uh, the time okay have here and here the electrolysis model and how to uh, use it okay so uh, before this this is the uh, geometry I uh, created in uh, all scan vendor so here is the current collector of the anode and then the gas diffusion layer just a very simple sketch and then extrude very simple sketch and then extrude and here anode catalyst exactly like the order we have just seen and here the membrane like a sandwich then the cathode catalyst layer cathode gas diffusion layer cathode uh, current collector and here the anode uh, channel uh, to uh, let the hydrogen uh, enter and here the cathode channel of for the oxygen okay so after that I import the create file make file and export cat format as XT parasol sometimes it does not work uh, in ANSYS when I uh, import it from Inventor so I have to open SOLIDWORKS and open the exported file the XT file and export it again as an XT but from SOLIDWORKS to uh, let it work in ANSYS so we are gonna talk about four simulations today we have the single uh, cell and then the stack and the cooling of both so let's get started Let's open a new, uh, create a new project. I just uh, made it. Okay, starting the design modeler. It takes some time. So we have here the X, Y, we're gonna import what we have. So 
So I have Phil Sill actually, uh, those are the guys, uh, names of the guys, I contacted them, they asked me uh, to help them uh, in the Phil uh, Sill, so I have to, I had to prepare this tutorial, but it actually took a uh, very long time for me, because it is it was not a very uh, easy task. So, uh, in the order, we're gonna start with Actually, we're gonna start with anode uh, flow channel we have here. We're gonna use the current collector. It will not matter because I have prepared the uh, distances between each part and just where is the anode? We're gonna start with the anode. Anode current collector with cooling, no. And current collector, okay. That's an XT. It's gonna be add material. Line bodies, yes. Okay, we have here. First of all, this is solid. Mm, yes, it is gonna be solid. Current collectors are solid. Import anode gas diffusion layer where anode gas diffusion layer and gas diffusion layer. It's gonna be add material. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, it's gonna be at frozen. I just forgot. I've just forgotten. At frozen. Line bodies, yes. So, material frozen. Oh, sorry. There's something is happening. Okay, yes. So, we have here this is not gonna be solid, it is fluid. Okay. So, we have now two parts. Then the catalyst it's gonna be add material yes yeah so we have the anode uh, catalyst and gas diffusion layer and then the membrane Notice, so we have here three parts, solid, mm, it's gonna be fluid, and here is fluid. You have to do this because it is very sensitive to uh, this influent, and after that we have the membrane. Membrane, we have add material, frozen, material, frozen. Follow the check on the number of bodies and it must be very accurate in your dimensions because no overlap is allowed, no overlapping is allowed, it is just like sandwich so this membrane is gonna be fluid 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 only, we have the current collector as solid. Now the cathode side the cathode catalyst layer is gonna be add material frozen material frozen material okay yes so we have now five bodies mm -hmm. this two three four five and after that this is fluid. After that, what we have the diffusion layer of the cathode. Cathode diffusion layer. Cathode diffusion layer. Cathode gas diffusion layer. So, material frozen, material frozen, material frozen. Yes. 
Okay, so we have now six parts. Six parts. Two, three, four, five, six. After that, the catalyst. Cathode catalyst there. Uh, no, the gas diffusion. I need the gas diffusion. So this is gas diffusion layer and cathode catalyst. Okay, uh, yeah, the current collector. Cathode current collector. Where? Cathode current collector. Yes. Frozen material, frozen material, frozen material, frozen. Yes. I have six bodies now. One more thing is the fluid channels. Yes, I just remembered. Fluid solid. This is the solid and this is the solid. The other are fluids. Okay. Okay. Now the channels. The end of the channel. The anode channel. I guess this is the end of the channel. There's gonna be uh, actually too frozen. Uh, yeah, it must be frozen because it will be surrounded by material and frozen. So no choice. Mm -hmm. So this is the channel gonna be fluid this is solid and here is the cathode channel yeah gonna be frozen mm -hmm. so it's gonna be fluid too so actually gentlemen uh, we have this by the way if you uh, here is material So material, frozen material, frozen material, frozen. This can be frozen, by the way, I forgot. Here it is, uh, it uh, had to be uh, material, okay? No problem if you make it material. Notice? No problem at all. But if you're gonna uh use this for a stack it is better to make it frozen because we will make a pattern and if this is add material and this is an add material they will combine together and become uh, will become one part so if you will use this single stack make it add material no problem because the layer uh, just behind her, behind it is at frozen, okay? But it is better to make it at frozen if you're gonna make the stack, okay? It will not differ if you are if are simulating as one single stack. No matter, uh, it will not matter actually the frozen and material. So I'm gonna let it frozen right now to use it for the stack. Okay, before closing, just check fluid, fluid, solid, fluid, 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 and here is the solid. So, one uh, more important, very important uh, step is to select all of this, these parts, and from new part for the conformal mesh or the conformal walls. It is pretty important to make them as a one part because we're gonna need the porous jump uh, boundary uh, condition or that that type because as you know if you open will and the voltage jump I guess you will sell the jump during polarization of a fuel uh, cell and we get resistances we have to uh, set the resistance it's 
So we can see that there is a voltage jump and we have to uh, represent the resistance of the uh, electrodes. So we have to use the porous jump. So let's continue. Okay. So we have here from the bar. Then close. The electrode is the gas diffusion layer. We're gonna set that. That we're gonna see how. Okay, let's open the mesh. So just have patience. And so we have here the amount before um, doing anything exactly like what we did in the berry tutorial. Please do not leak it, it may uh, no, uh, you have to change it. This is solid and all of them are fluid. We can actually where where this is solid. Okay. And then this and this and this and this and this and this. Okay. Gonna be fluid okay so let's check again solid fluid 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 solid then fluid then fluid okay to let them appear in the tabs okay uh, this in this case where I'm gonna use the uh, default uh, sizing but you must carry out a mesh dependence study so let's generate the mesh. Okay. But of course I need it to be fine. Yeah. Then update it. Okay, the mesh translation to Fluent was successful, no problem, no uh, no problems. So first of all, name selection. This is the current collector. Tor or current and okay. Then the uh, gas diffusion layer. G D L anode then the catalyst anode then the membrane membrane then the catalyst cathode then GDL cathode then the current collector cathode then channel anode of hydrogen then channel cathode Okay, we have the current anode, then uh, the gas diffusion layer anode, after that the catalyst, membrane, catalyst, GDL, current, channel, and channel, okay, these are the bodies. These are the bodies. 
So now for the boundary conditions, we're gonna use faces actually. So this face is gonna be tab anode, and then tab cathode. Okay, for the voltage. And after that, we have the okay, just idle other bodies. This is the inlet anode, and here is the outlet anode. Okay, show all bodies. All bodies. Mm -hmm. So let's see again. Inlet anode, outlet anode. Here is his outlet cathode. Cathode. It's not the inlet. And here is the inlet. As you know, the uh, oxygen enters from a side and the hydrogen enters from the other side. So here is the inlet cathode. Okay, so it enters from opposite directions. Okay, show bodies. And then the porous jump uh, part. We're gonna make it the contact between the channel and the gas diffusion layer or the electrode. I will put other bodies as you can see here. We'll find this this wall. Okay, this wall is the porous jump for the anode jump anode. Can make it like this or jump anode show all bodies this me one of this and it is gonna be not this it is gonna be as you can see it's not this wall it is the contact yeah the bottom of it the uh, it is the inner face actually between the GDL and the channel. So this is porous jump cathode. Mm -hmm. Show the bodies. We'll find here is the channel. So I need here the bottom of it and here is the top of it. Okay. So tab A, tab C, and the inlet, outlet outlet inlet and porous jump okay so now gentlemen we have to uh, update the mesh okay now we have this setup We have the, we can use the double precession, of course, due to the complexity of the solution. For parallel serial, uh, I always say this: if you have a very big mesh or lots of cells, you have to use the parallel. I have here four threads, uh, but the mesh here uh, is not that complicated. By the way, uh, before opening Fluent, we have to make sure that the maximum skewness of the cell does not exceed 0.98. So let's see it again. In generally, in all Fluent simulations you carry out, you must not exceed 0 0.98 for the skewness 
those you check the statistics and the uh, quality but of course because this mesh is uh, structured I have here the uh, elements uh, very low and the uh, quality for the skewness here this is very low skewness the maximum must not exceed 0 0.98 and of course this skewness is pretty small so no problem now so I'm gonna use the serial no need for the pearl okay uh, just save it I don't wanna lose what we have done yeah let's open so one of the best uh, best things here that the setup actually uh, does not take uh, efforts because we're gonna use the module I'm gonna only use the load the PEM module not the uh, the whole electrolysis module so define models add-on module enter so you have here uh, all modules and here SOFC if you wanna fill cell electrolysis model this is number three you'll find uh, the whole thing in it the whole types of the fuel cells okay like this we'll find PEM FC SO FC and then the electrolysis but I'm, I'm gonna only load the PEM FC which is number 9 okay click 9 and enter and then wait okay so the UDS for user defined functions have just been loaded. So we open models and energy equation must be turned on and the species because we have species here. I'm not gonna uh, change anything just uh, you have to get some information about these options from the theory guide it is pretty important okay and then the PEM fuel cell once you uh, make species available the mixture uh, in the materials will be loaded automatically I'm gonna show you this uh, we have here the model uh, you must before running any simulation to study all these kind of options you'll find these details in the theory guide or the uh, any uh, ANSYS fluent guide relating, related to this uh, module and we have here the parameters that of course affect the fuel cell you must study these kind of things carefully for this story I'm gonna leave everything as default but here now the anode we have here the current collector where is the current anode yes and because we have defined the species you will find the materials here so collector default okay flow channel channel anode and porous porous is the GDL we have here the diff layer is the material of this you can change anything and here is the catalyst catalyst A we have here the catalyst these are the materials that uh, are loaded just once we uh, let species on we do not have here uh, actually micro porous layer so I'm gonna leave it for the electrolyte it is the membrane and it is the electrolyte default and here is the cathode the same but current collector current C channel C 
chorus GDLC and the catalyst catalyst C and be careful look at the uh, materials so one of the best things here that everything are automatic automatically loaded here for the advanced uh, we have here the content uh, resistivity because of the jump that's why we had to uh, make the porous jump actually it is an inner face or an interior but it is just a face it is not a body okay we're gonna use this and 2e minus 6 ohm uh, square meter 2e minus 6 I got these values from the video uh, they published as I remember okay we we'll find this thing we not have coolant, we do not have stack, so go. And uh, here, uh, to light projected area, it is the uh, projected area of the tab. So we have here to get it. Okay. So we have here in the reports and post processing the projected areas of the cathode. It is uh, in the y direction. Tap cathode. Okay, just compute. Okay, the area is 2e minus 5. Okay, 2e minus 5. This is what we need here. Like this. Okay. So after that, we have here the external contact interfaces or uh, the tabs, tab A and tab C. Okay, and we're done. Okay. Uh, the software is, uh, well, it's gonna tell us about that we did not use the micro channels. Yeah, I don't, I do not need it. So now for the materials, actually as you can see fluid solid mixture. The mixture is uh, loaded because of the species. If you do not turn on the species, you will not find the mixture. So we have here the mixture, it is the FC mixture, fuel cell, nitrogen, water vapor, oxygen, hydrogen, and this kind of uh, things is automatically. And we have here the materials of the uh, things, okay. So we have here the materials and here is the electrolyte, the catalyst, MPL and the layer and collector and these kind of things and we have here the fluid. Okay, so the cell zones, the catalyst is fluid, catalyst or fluid, channel fluid, current solid. By default, that's why it's pretty amazing to uh, follow the procedure I uh, followed in the geometry and meshing and to uh, let everything uh, gonna be okay, okay? The GDL flow, GDL membrane. If you open all these cell zones, you will find the amazing thing that this is the default FC mixture is gonna be used and porous fixed value source terms we have here the porous of course these are the default values you can uh, change them if you need only and we have here the values and uh, the porosity and the most important thing is the catalyst default because we have here the catalyst this is the material of it we have here the source terms H2O2 and uh, H2O we have the sources the UDF specifically or used or especially used for this we do not change anything actually it is the default and this is because we are using the module you'll find everything here is set okay we have here the fixed values also and then click OK the same for catalyst cathode okay and these kind of things okay and then for the channel
source terms, fixed values. Mm -hmm. It differs. And here water content is zero. Current is going to be solid. We have here the collector, source terms, energy, and electric potential. Fixed values, just water content, zero. And the membrane and the GDL and everything. Porous. And here is electrolyte. Okay, okay. I do not change anything now for the GDL. Diff source and fixed values. Okay, saturation is zero. So now the uh, operating uh, conditions or the boundary conditions. Let's set up the physics operating conditions. It's gonna be zero, 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 two hundred thousand uh, Pascal. Okay like the uh, published video and here are the boundary conditions the inlet anode mass flow rate of the hydrogen 3e negative 7 by the way uh, the geometry I use here I'm using here is different from the uh, published video so I expect different uh, results because I'm gonna use the same boundary conditions 3e negative 7 and we have here normal to the boundary, thermal 353.15, the species, the hydrogen is 6, 0.6, and here is 0.4. We have the UDS, we have here the saturation is uh, 0, specified value. There is a difference between the specified value and the flux. You can check this things from the references and the same here is normal and here is 2e negative 6 for the uh, cathode okay this is for the oxygen thermal p5 species it's gonna be 1 1 and here is 15 and the uds the same zero okay so after that we have the poro jump poro jump that's why we had to uh, make it like this you can change anything here this permeability and porous medium thickness and these kind of things pressure jump coefficient and the contact resistance okay i'm gonna leave them Okay, and uh, I have here uh, the tab A. These are pretty important. The temperature. Actually, no need to change anything here for the material because we have cell zones already. 35315. And UDS, we must make it here specified value for electric potential 0. Okay. I am not sure of the protonic uh, potential if this mean the, means that we were gonna set the current okay but I have never used it so you can uh, try it or get some information about protonic potential as you know we can put the voltage or the current as we have said here yeah, uh, cell voltage you prescribe the current density values from it. Alternatively, a cell voltage can be computed based on the prescribed average current density. So I'm not sure about the protonic potential, but I'm sure about the electric potential. I'm gonna make it zero for the anode, and for the cathode, we must put a value UDS specified value. For this cell is gonna be six five. Okay. That's it for the boundary conditions. The methods are loaded uh, depending on the uh, default. So 
So I'm not gonna change anything, but you have to know uh, better. And we have here the monitors. Actually, I'm not gonna waste uh, the time for making any monitors here. You can make the monitors. Just watch my video about lithium ion batteries and to learn how to uh, monitor the temperature or any uh, value or, or variables or the parameters you need the values here. You can watch my video and to uh, to learn how to make the monitor and to report them uh, as uh, text files to get the values and paste them in an Excel sheet. Okay, we do not need this now because I'm gonna use something else. Now we're gonna initialize the solution, and we must see that there is a convergence how the residuals decreases or decrease. As you can see, it decreases without any warning. Negative 12 and then negative 13 without any problem. Uh, calculation activities, the auto save. If you want to make an animation, it should be at least 5. It will save the contours every 5 iterations. And we have here uh, where. Yeah, yeah, not here. Uh, I mean, the monitors, yes, the residuals. To enhance the conversions, you can decrease this, these values like this, just to increase the uh, chance of the conversion, because this is the residual accuracy. Conversion absolute criteria, but now I'm gonna leave them as default. Okay, now we can run the calculation for 150, then calculate. So let's see if we will get the convergence or not. The convergence is uh, can occur if the residuals is uh, negative 10 to the negative 4 and you can see minus 5, minus 4, minus 4, minus 6, minus 10 this is pretty amazing this means that the solution is converged for each uh, quantity Okay, once we get negative 4, this means conversions. But you must carry out mesh dependence study. Because the solution accuracy will be better, will be enhanced. Okay. So calculation complete. So uh, before doing anything, just uh, we have to uh, create surface, create ISO surface. And let's get the grid or the mesh and make the units millimeter for the length. Okay. In Z coordinate. Just uh, compute 10 millimeter. I need in the middle so. Here the other value is 5 millimeter. This is plain XY. Create. And then in X coordinate, compute. It's gonna be uh, this. So this value minus this value will give you a value divided by 2. It is gonna be 1.000005. Okay. Plain. YZ. Just create. We're gonna use these surfaces for the contours. Now we're gonna. Here is the video published on YouTube. 
we have here this uh, these values as you can see we have these contours of course I predict different values because of the differences in the geometry we have here the uh, first of all vector options no custom vectors and then this is current uh, density current flux density magnitude current flux density magnitude no problem this is defined memory 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 and whatever x and then y and then z so y x y and z okay these are the custom vector uh, it's gonna be the uh, magnitude current flux density okay uh, by the way this is the current flux density uh, I used it I used the same name for the ISO service no problem okay no problem now I need the the magnitude okay I need the magnitude for the current flux density okay and for the ice surface yeah x y and y z we're gonna use x y and then let's display so we have here the contours you can increase the uh, scale custom vectors vector options and here the scale may you can make it to like this as you can see it is the same uh, directions but of course here the scale is just uh, just different uh, here for this green is one around 1.38 uh, multiplied by 10 to the power 4 and we have here something like this you'll find it here 1.25 multiplied by uh, 10 to the power 4 so it is just uh, approaching from that value this green is 1.1 or 1.38 and here is uh, between 1.25 multiplied uh, by 4 and this value multiplied by 3 to get the exact value you can monitor uh, put a monitor but no need now at this coordinate okay so this good uh, as you know the geometry uh, of course uh, affect the values pretty much so okay close this and we're gonna see now the contours Field, gonna see the uh, species of the hydrogen, the hydrogen in YZ. As you can see, the hydrogen enters from the anode. Yeah. Of H two, as you can see, the maximum is at the anode and it, it, it becomes lower in this direction so 6 to negative 1 and of course it is approaching from these values that's pretty impressive actually okay 2.7 and 2.4 this is pretty good and here for the hydrogen we're gonna see the different the oxygen the oxygen uh, higher here and becomes slower and this is the scale 2.1 negative uh, minus 1 let's see the oxygen the oxygen is higher here and then becomes slower as you can see 2.1 and it is the same but uh, the exact results 
of course uh, are different because of the geometry so uh, that's pretty good now we have to check out the temperatures the temperature and because we're gonna compare the temperature uh, between this uh, simulation and with cooling in XY we have here this temperature this temperature distribution 3.55 okay uh, we started by 3.353.15 uh, and we have here the maximum is 3.55 divided by 10 to the power 2 so this is the temperature distribution and here also so as you can see the lowest is 353.15 and it increases because of the chemical reaction so if we use the cooling uh, techniques we predict lower temperatures of course lower than 3.55 multiplied by 10 to the power 2 so one last thing the current of this uh, cell the uh, depends on the electrons released uh, because of the uh, oxygen I guess you can find the equation that uh, is used for the calculation of the current of the fuel cells based on the uh, gases okay or mass flow rate that uh, will be consumed and then as a result of that it will release electrons as you know it will release electrons but the easiest way is to uh, get it to post-processing and reports and the surface uh, integrals we're gonna integrate the uh, area of the tab integral tab cathode mm -hmm. or the anode I guess it's the anode and then we compute it will give us the current and it's not the pressure I need the memory and in the y direction compute it is gonna be as you can see 0 0.19 okay it's gonna be 0 0.19 so this is the uh, current produced by this uh, cell to get the current uh, density as you know 0 0.19 and then 7 and 4 it is divided by the area of the uh, tab okay which was 2 multiplied by 10 to the power 5 remember that area and it will give you 9.87 multiplied by 10 to the power 3 remember that the current this is the velocity I need this okay for example this so gentlemen uh, for example this value 6.24 multiplied by 10 to the power 3 this is the current density magnitude if you multiply it by the area of this tab to uh, multiply by 10 to the power uh, negative 5 it gives you 0 0.1248 this is the current at this uh, location okay so it is pretty close to the value that we have just uh, got okay from the surface in areas but this is the total current for by the cell manually I got it 0 0.12 and here is 0 0.19 for the whole cell so it is consistent I see okay before doing that uh, by the way gentlemen in the boundary conditions I did not remember to uh, check on the pressure we have a pressure outlet it's gonna be a zero gauge but what I did not do is we must put it 
here 353.15 because it is uh, it affects it affects the uh, output okay or the species I'm not gonna uh, touch them so outlet 300 Kelvin is very cool it is the operating condition is 353.15 okay the species I'm not gonna use them for anything now we're gonna initialize the solution again okay by the way gentlemen this is the uh, simulation I carried out before recording so I just wanted to uh, tell you that we did not uh, use the uh, output pressure we have to put it 353.15 and exactly the outlet 3.5 uh, 3.15 I did not do that okay so I just uh, want to uh, make sure you have to make this and uh, we have here the contours at this it did not differ uh, a lot actually when I used uh, that temperature but it's pretty important okay and we have here the the magnitude okay and uh, for this model I used actually the same uh, input spot here I got this current is 0 0.21 okay so it is not uh, it's not a big difference, not a big difference, but anyway, you have to put the uh, inlet and the outlet temperatures and the taps. Okay, of course, as you can see, uh, the, this model is pretty sensitive, and uh, any change in the boundary conditions affect the results. Okay, now let's go to the stack. So gentlemen to uh, save the uh, time you exactly here we have the same procedure we imported the geometry the 9 and then we have here the 9 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 then add, add frozen please make the uh, the cathode this is not the cathode channel, it was the uh, current collector, but I, uh, I named it uh, wrongly. This is the uh, current collector, okay. Forget about the name here, this is not the channel. Yeah, this is not the current collector, this is the channel, and this is the channel. I named it wrongly, okay. So, it doesn't matter now. After that, make this, please add frozen because we're gonna use the pattern create pattern and it is gonna be linear if you make pattern make it linear and select the whole geometry okay and for example and then the direction okay the direction is gonna be like this and I exactly calculated the distance okay that we need to make the pattern exactly like sandwich there is no gap between the two cells no gap just you can make it very easily and of course we have two parts right now the first part and the second part okay so this is part and no need to make uh, the second part by yourself it is gonna be generated automatically so we have two parts and following the same solid and fluid 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 and then solid okay so after that we close and we have here 
No, I'm just because I deleted something. Open the mesh. The same name selection procedure is gonna be applied but for each cell. So we have here the geometry part one. We have here solid, fluid, 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 solid, fluid, fluid. And then part two, the same procedure, please. You have to make it solid, fluid, 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 solid, fluid, fluid. Okay. After that, the mesh. We have here only uh, one contact region between the uh, the current collector of the single cell uh, of number one and the single cell number two. So this is the only mesh interface. And here the mesh I had to make the size lower 0.1 because the default did not work and uh, the divergence occurred. So I had to decrease the uh, size to 0.1. For the name selection, you will follow the same the same procedure. You name it and inlet A, outlet A, inlet C, outlet C, for a jump, and then move to the cell number two. Exactly, apply the same, but anode two, GDL two, membrane two, catalyst uh, cathode two. This way, inlet anode two, then outlet anode. To exactly repeat the same for each uh, one and outlet and porous jump and porous jump but we have here the only difference is tab A tab A is this wall the first wall or the top wall and tab C is the bottom okay it is not gonna be this wall now we have a stack if we have three cells of course, we will start from the top and the last wall is going to be Tapsy or Tap Cathode. Okay, so Tap Cathode. So this is Tap Cathode. This wall, the bottom wall. Show all bodies. So gentlemen, exactly you will repeat the same thing. I made my bodies. Show sure bodies. Okay, no problem. It's no problem again. So we have here channel A2 or uh, yeah, channel A2, GDL A2, and then catalyst A2. Membrane catalyst C2. Let's make zoom. Yes. And current and current and the inlets and outlets for a jump. There is no differences. There are no differences. Just here are the same name selection. Just put one and two. Okay. The only difference or the only real difference is the tabs, the tab anode, tab anode and tab cathode the bottom. The mesh, uh, as you know, we have here the sizing and statistics. We, I had here to use the pearl uh, processing and we have the maximum okay, it's okay. After the update, I move to the setup. Let's open, and as you can see, it is three.
Following the same procedure, gentlemen, in loading the uh, PEM module, you follow it without any problem. Yeah. Well, of course, we are going to have here uh, the interfaces just between the current collector of the uh, cathode of the single the single cell number one and the current collector of the anode of the number cell number two. We have only the, this inner interface. We do not touch it. Uh, models, energy on, and then, of course, the species exactly do what you did, and you can use the full, of course, no problem. And here, the PEM. The PEM here, the same for the anode. We're gonna use A and A2, because we have here two cells, flow channel, channel A, channel A2 for the anode, chorus, GDL A2, -A and catalyst, and so on. Electrolyte, membrane A, membrane 2. The same here, but for cathode, O channel, chorus, and catalyst. Okay. And here the advanced, the same porous jump, we have four. And then we don't have coolant, but we have a stack. So the stack actually, to create a stack, you will find here nothing. Okay, so you select the nine zones of stack number one, for example, uh, cell number one, catalyst A, catalyst C, and channel A, channel C, current A, current C, GDL A, GDL C, and its membrane. Of course. Okay, and then name it FCU0 uh, and then click create, okay, like this. After crea the creation, you will find FCU0 here. So, so just select the nine zones of the single cell for, from the anode to the cathode, okay. There is no two here. After that, you repeat the same thing. Just select the uh, all the tools here and create a name FCU1 and then click create like this. You'll find that. And that's it. So we have here actually 18 zones, 9, 9. So we have here full cell units without any problem. Then the reports, uh, we have here the electrolyte projected area. That's the same. So the projection and we have here tab A and tab cathode. Then click OK, and no problem. The materials actually, as you can see, this is the material. These are the materials. Actually, you can change anything, as you know, from opening this and changing anything related to this material. For the cell zones, actually, we have here the catalyst. We have the same. We do not change anything for us the same gentlemen catalyst without any troubles you'll find the same thing loaded here okay catalyst cathode okay and so on do not touch anything if you are not sure and we have here the solids and the membranes, everything. And we have here the boundary conditions. We have uh, four inlets and four outlets. Mm -hmm. So inlet, anode, and thermal, species, and UDS. Okay, the inlet of NO2, it is exactly the same. So how to do that for the first time? You come here, you do inlet anode, and then copy it to inlet anode 2. Okay, inlet anode 2, just to not repeat 
everything again if the boundary will be the same just copy it as I taught you in the lithium ion tutorial for the cathode we're gonna use different values thermal species and UDS and click OK of course the cathode here is like cathode 2 so you copy it to cathode 2 that's it after finishing the inlets you go to the outlets and make the pressure temperature in zero species nothing here we did not touch these things just here for the pressure pressure and for the temperature okay and the same and then tap a and here is the temperature and the UDS specified value 0 and tap C and the UDS by the way specified value we have here two cells in series so 0 0.5 Six five multiplied by two, we have one point three as an electric potential. No, we, it is not zero point six five. Okay, we will call it because this is a stack. So, gentlemen, we have here the porous jump also. Porous jump, porous jump, porous jump. We have four porous jump. Okay. Exactly, we defined everything as the single cell in the named selection. Just apply them again on the second cell, but with one and two, the numbers just different. And then the operating conditions, and then initialize the solution. Okay. After initializing the solution, you will find here the solution. Okay, we're gonna close this and open the solution just to save the time. Okay, gentlemen, after finishing that, we have here the contours, the temperature. Let's see the species, mass fraction, YZ. As you can see for both cells okay and here for O2 okay that's pretty amazing for the temperature we'll find here also the distribution just the uh, each cell has the 0 0.56 or 65 uh, voltage so the uh, contours are I guess similar to the previous simulation but the here for the stack okay and here are the vectors of the current flux exactly the same you follow the same procedure without any problem and you'll find here the distribution of both cells okay as you can see we'll find it it is within the range it is not a very high it's just between 10 to the power 3 and 10 to the power 4 okay and now post processing we get the reports Mm -hmm. surface integrals the integral pressure I guess it's gonna be only for one cell it's not for the stack because we're integrate the uh, density over the area of the tab so just for one cell okay tab A and then compute yeah it's just 0 0.21 exactly like the single cell I have just shown you uh, that I carried out before recording we got the same current here so just this is for the single cell I guess and 
to get the current of the stack just multiply this by two so this is the this is the current and the total current is multiplied by the number of cells I see I guess okay so now we're gonna close and go to cooling of the single cell so we have here the uh, current collector but with channels just to uh, let the coolant enter we have just extruded this and I prepared three uh, zones exactly that will match this volume okay just uh, generate uh, the rectangle and then uh, use extrusion command exactly uh, exactly at the same location I generate something it's pure CAD work and here exactly the same thing I did we have here the diffusion layer and the catalyst layer and membrane and then catalyst and get diffusion the same but we have here the current collector with cooling and here is the channel the first channel of cooling okay and not cooling channel number one it is just a rectangle or it's like something like this and it is gonna be add frozen or add material it depends on the add frozen or add material of the current show bodies so notice that add frozen material exactly do the same and we have here uh, because this is add material this is add frozen add frozen add frozen then uh, this is add frozen and this will be add material add material add material now we have 15 bodies because uh, 7 parts with 15 bodies we have 9 and then 10 11 12 13 14 15 okay so the uh, idea here is to uh, select the uh, parts only of the single cell the nine and then create uh, from new part and then leave the six channels alone okay do not include them in the part okay because this will affect the solution and again make sure of fluid and solid these are fluids mm -hmm. And then close and go to meshing. Repeat the same thing and only add the name selections for the new zones, the cooling channels, and give them inlets and outlets. That's it. It is just a repeating procedure. Or repeated procedure. So, here, gentlemen, we have the geometry, we have uh, part plus this these uh, zones are not included in this part this part has its nine zones and make sure salt fluid 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 and then solid and here all of them are fluids okay the name selection is the same but we're gonna add as you can see it is the same we do not change anything channel, channel, inlet, outlet, outlet, inlet, porous, porous, okay, then tab A, tab C, without any problem for the single cell, but now we have to make cooling channel number one, cooling two, cooling three, cooling four, five, six, and give them inlets, inlet cooling one, two, three, inlet, Inlet, inlet for six inlets and then six outlets. Then six outlets. Okay, this is the outlet cooling number six because number six is this. Be careful, please. And the mesh. 
we have here the sizing it is the default you know uh, this stack only does not work at this default so it was 0 0.1 for the stack and here are the statistics and the quality okay pretty good then we open the setup again but to get the uh, solution I'm gonna open the solution just to save the time I'm gonna show you the setup of course We have here uh, more than one interfaces because of the coding channels, as you can see. So we have here the models, the same, we define the model, uh, load it, energy, viscous laminar, uh, species, the same. Everything, please do it again, do it again, and then PEM. And notice current flow channel electrode porous catalyst electrolyte the same here porous uh, here flow channel porous TBL catalyst contact resistivity the same but we have here coolant channel start uh, selecting all these and enable coolant modeling we can use here water this is the coolant density that's it no stack and here is the same tab A and tab C with the projected area that's it and the materials as you can see make sure but the make sure here we have the cooling make sure has been added PM make sure we'll see uh, PM plus cool plus mixture so German if you wanna just to change uh, anything uh, open the mixture here this is PEM plus cool plus mixture edit and we have here the coolant you can add remove anything but do not uh, do that because it is uh, programmed to work this way Just if you want to change the properties, you can change it, of course. We have here, I guess, these properties of the water. It's supposed to be 0 0.001, and here's the uh, 4.18 kilojoule, kilogram Kelvin, and these kind of things. And here is uh, H2O2 uh, two plus 16 is 18, okay? So can change anything, but please do not change the default of the procedure itself. We here we have the cell zones. We have here the same, but we have here the cooling. Notice that we will get a new thing here. We have here not the FC make uh, make sure we have the PM plus cool porous everything. And the source term, as you can see, we have here the coolant, but we do not have here, we do not have uh, a mass fraction for it because there is no coolant here, I guess. Uh, the same for this, the other zones, except the cooling. The cooling will find one. As you can see here, fixed values, coolant mass will be one. And the same for every cooling. That's why it is pretty important to follow the same procedure but just change the properties as you can see and the boundary conditions are the same but we have two endle uh, more endless the same, the same, repeat the same and there is no coolant here and for the UDS 
specified value, it's gonna be zero. The same for the C, but change. Okay. Okay. Here is inlet cooling. Uh, because I'm gonna repeat everything for the inlets, I copied them. 0 0.1 meter per second, 300. Okay. Species. You can put it this zero. By the way, I just was uh, I just was trying to uh, test something just for me. But the current here is gonna be one, and everything is gonna be zero. And here I did not change here uh, this. I just lift lift it. Then I copied this inlet cooling one just to copy it and use inlet cooling all of these kind of things just to save your time after that go to the pressure and taps we have here the outlet as you know we have the same but we have here 300 kelvin okay here the most important thing are the temperature values mm -hmm. wall tab and then the porous jump Specified value zero. And tap cathode specified value zero, and specified cathode. Sorry, uh, zero point six five because this is a single cell. Operating conditions, as you know, two hundred thousand. That's pretty impressive. And then, for a jump, for a jump, the same. Then after running the simulation, you will get. The contours Yeah Not, Notice that I'm gonna see an amazing thing right now Notice that the lowest is 300 and the maximum is 353 Not 355 also Look at the distribution of the temperature. We have here low temperature values because of the cooling. As you see, this cell is cooler. Mm -hmm. Notice that the maximum range here is 3.53, not 3.55. And uh, we have here a better distribution. Okay, so we have cooled the cell and this is the result of cooling as you can see the same notice the temperature decreased significantly because of using this and here is the fluid temperature and here is the core of the cell I guess is the highest or at the tabs mm -hmm. and then the vectors the same we'll find here this okay okay uh, the same but I uh, there is some differences actually in the density and the current because we replaced some material from or of the current collector in both anode and cathode and replaced them with coolant so of course there is some differences between this current and the other value of the other simulation you get the integral here, we're gonna uh, compare it to uh, 0 0.21 the y mm. and compute yes, it is 0 0.26 0 0.26, so I compared it to 0 0.21 Okay, or 0 0.19, but it was a uh, different uh, Okay, so as you can see This is with the cooling 
So we have here a significant increase, by the way. So this is pretty uh, good. Mm -hmm. So gentlemen, this is pretty uh, amazing, actually. So we have here everything. So now we're gonna cool the stick. So gentlemen, the same we uh, did the same. We imported these layers again at frozen at material, as you know. Okay, then the cooling. Okay, and then the uh, current collector, and then the cooling channel six. After that, exactly pattern with the uh, accurate number value we have now 13 bodies we have six cooling channels and six cooling channels so we have 12 so one two three four five six and then the single cell number one and then part number four okay one Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Mm -hmm. So, gentlemen, we have here the sick one, two, three, four, five, six, and then this part. Okay, and then the cooling channels of the other cell. And then this part, so we have 30, okay. The same, we name the selection, stack with cooling, yes, meshing. I think that you saved it uh, pretty well in your mind, because we repeated the same procedure lots of times. It is just the idea of the pattern and naming the selection but putting one or two and two just the numbers part three and the one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve all of them are fluids and here part four okay we have here the mesh and as you know the sizing it had to be 0 0.1 to uh, to run the quality we did not exceed 0 0.98 it is the maximum you must not exceed 0 0.98 we did not uh, make it we did not exceed it actually but this is without meshing dependence study so we must carry out the mesh dependence study so current A, then GDL, catalyst, and membrane, catalyst C, GDL C, current C, channel A, channel C, inlet A, A outlet A, inlet C, inlet, outlet C, inlet C, porous, porous. Then cooling 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then end it cooling one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then out it one, two, three, four, five, six. Then when you finish this cell, start the second cell exactly, exactly. Deal it as you only have this cell current GDL, but notice that here is A2, 2, 2, 2. Everything here is 2, 2, 2, just duplication. A2, 2. two. Cooling, cooling, seven, okay, and inlets and outlets. Notice that we have also the tab A and C. This is tab A and at the bottom is tab C because this is a stack. Mm -hmm. We have here the inlets and we have here the outlet. Outlet of 10, we'll find it here, okay. That's pretty amazing, but it's pretty tough. Now the setup. 
Let's open the solution to save the time. Now let's uh, compare 0.21 amp to this see the cooling effect Okay. Models, energy on, viscous, laminar, species. Okay. Mm -hmm. For for full. And the PEM fuel cell. Parameters, anode, current, flow channel, GDLA and A2, and AA2, electrolyte, cathode, mm -hmm. porous, GB uh, layer catalyst, catalyst, advanced, next, so the same. Okay, and here is the coolant channel. Select all the channels. We have 10, uh, 12 uh, actually. Select all them and enable coolant modeling. Stack management exactly. I selected cooling 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and current A, C, GDLA, C, membrane, and current and of course catalyst C uh, A channel A and C okay so catalyst channel cooling and current and GDL and membrane so here are 15 from 30 then you can click create okay then I select these 2, 2, 2, and 10, 11, 12, 7, 8, 9, okay, and 2, 2, 2, each, every 2, and FCU 1, and then click create, you will find this. So now we have 30, 30. That's it. Reports, and we have here the electrolyte projected area, and tab A and tab C, and thank you so much for reaching this point with me today and we have here the same PEM cool mixture and if you want to change anything here you can kindly open it and change what you want mm -hmm. okay and we have here seal conditions catalyst just the repeated procedure would not touch these things Mm -hmm. Coolant one, uh, I'm sorry, constant one. We have here coolant zero, fix the values, but we have here in the cooling, you'll find the coolant one. Fix it values, coolant mass fraction one. Okay, for the boundary conditions, inlet mass flow rate. It is a repeated task, species, coolant zero, specified value zero, and let A2, it is the same because we have a stack, put everything, okay, and let cathode for the oxygen Mm -hmm. and then in the cooling it is gonna be the same for the whole 12 we have 
yeah you can put this like I said zero and here is one I did not change anything everything here are the same so we have here the porous 4 outlet the outlet here is 353.15 for the temperature and that's it and the same but here the outlet 300 Kelvin that's it for the whole procedure I just copy and paste mm -hmm. wall A for the tab temperature UDS specified value 0 and then this temperature and here is uh, this tag is 1.3 remember this carefully and uh, physics breathing conditions the same thing after that gentlemen okay do not touch this you uh, initialize solution and run it and then you get the contours The temperature uh, without cooling it is three it is, uh, high it's around 355 now let's see that's pretty amazing we have low temperature distribution the maximum is, is 353 so we have here the cooling procedure is pretty amazing okay YZ yeah so the same so this is the cooling effect notice it does not exceed actually 353 uh, this is the maximum mm. that's pretty awesome and also for the vectors find the distribution Okay. This is not what I want. Plain X, Y not Y Z. Yeah. Same. Yes. Notice what we have low values one point zero seven. As you can see, it is in the same range. Mm. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty amazing. Let's see the last thing we have today. We have the current after cooling. Integral memory y integrate please tab a notice it is more than or higher than 0 0.21 this is 0 0.228 which is a significant increase in the uh, cell okay just it is the uh, effect of cooling but really it was pretty amazing in the single cell so as you can see we uh, actually care about the temperature in this kind of simulation just to, to uh, work with efficient uh, operation okay and uh, we we expect sometimes to increase the uh, current but actually the main focus is the efficiency of the operation and the, uh, the avoid the damage of the uh, fuel cell itself okay so of course we need to cool the cells so we need to compare with and without cooling because we know that with cooling it is, it is more important okay whatever the current we get but we have to focus on the low temperature that we get from the cooling 
and then uh, you try to enhance the current density by the uh, recent ways so of course it does not make sense to get a fuel cell without cooling uh, just it is a very uh, if you uh, are using a very small single uh, cell but as we can see there is an enhance in the results okay so thank you gentlemen uh, so much for watching this video I'm sorry it is pretty uh, long but as you know uh, it is pretty tough to model these kind of things thank you so much for, uh, you followed the whole procedure and uh, we uh, simulated the single cell and then the stack and then we cooled both of them please try to uh, study before using uh, the CFD tools and get research papers and try to reach every thing or understand every thing before applying because it is pretty tough as you can see so thank you so much uh, I wish this helps you and I wish you all the best. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.